Hey guys, I just got finished watching The Princess and the Frog for the first time and I'm here to let you know what I think. Um, it was okay. Like, I will, I'll be honest, I was not blown away by it, but it wasn't like meh. Like, it was good. Um, I didn't realize how, like, what point in the animation it was. Um, so it was not, I thought it was going to be more like Frozen level of animation, which it wasn't, which is totally cool. Um, but it was still really good. I thought a lot of the songs were catchy. It was definitely set in the most modern time period. Like, there are cars. So that was kind of weird. Um, but I liked it. And it was, it was definitely set in this unique piece of um, the culture like of America in Louisiana, which I thought was a really cool thing to show. Um, I thought this movie did a great job introducing the characters, introducing their personalities, their motivations, what drives them. Um, it was really good character setup. Um, I love the juxtaposition between like the upper class and the lower class in the time. Um, I also loved with that when they showed like the difference between how Lottie lived versus how Tiana lived, that they still had a good friendship between them. Yes, Tiana's family worked for Lottie's family, but Tiana and Lottie were still friends, not just as girls, but as they grew up, they were still friends. And I absolutely loved this because it seemed like a genuine friendship, even though Tiana knew that like Lottie's priorities were very different and she probably viewed them much lower than hers. They were still friends, like friends enough that when Tiana's dress got ruined at the party, Lottie like brought her upstairs, put her in a really nice dress, like even like left the prince, like I got to go take care of my friend and I'll be back. I thought that said so much to Lottie's character. Um, I, I just love the friendship overall, but I thought that really gave um, Lottie this beautiful, genuine moment amongst just being focused on finding a prince. I love that. Um, let me just say, the prince is a jerk. <laughs> I did not like him at any point in this movie, and I know that's probably gonna be controversial, but even when he went through like his transformation, I was like, yeah, he was such a jerk. <laughs> And his transformation wasn't really that significant. And my, like, from my point of view, I thought he was a jerk and then he became more of a jerk. And then he was still really a jerk. And then they almost died. And then he's like, oh, you're cool. Now I'm in love with you. And I'm not a jerk anymore. And let me just say, like, the transformation happened so quick. I didn't believe it. I, this is probably the love story. Like, I'm telling you, I was even more in favor of Snow White and nameless prince's love than this one. I'm not okay with it. Like, he was just a punk to her the whole time. He clearly showed that he was a womanizer. He felt like it was just a no-go. And it's like, oh, well, we almost died, and you said something kind of sweet about, I'm gonna get a job to help you find your dream. It's like, okay, let's get married. I'm in love with you. I'm like, what? Like, I've seen many movies, guys, many, many movies. And I've seen the whole, like, he's a jerk, but through like falling in love with her, like he becomes better. And I'm okay with that um, to a point, to a point that like you shouldn't like date jerks thinking they're gonna become better. Don't think that. But like I have seen people, like almost every good relationship I've seen, they have both grown in it. I am talking real life people I know in the best relationships I've seen, they grow together. They bring out the best of each other and they grow and mature through that relationship. So I believe that people can get better. However, we should never think, oh, he's a jerk, but he'll love me and become less of a jerk. We're not, no, we're, just don't even think that, never. Just stop. You're gonna save yourself a lot of heartbreak if you throw that idea out the window. But like... There was nothing like in those movies where they pull that storyline out and I would say a believable way, um, you have the tension between them is like this bordering of like, oh, I kind of hate you, but I hate you so much. I almost love you. Like there's like this intense tension of walking that line between love and hate and they build it and they build it and build it so that when they flip the switch, it's believable. And here he just seemed annoying and she just seemed annoyed and not in like a, ooh, I'm bordering, like my passion of this is so strong. Is it hate? Is it love? It was just like, nah, you're just annoying and you're just a punk. And so I didn't believe it. I didn't buy it. I, I thought it was very flimsy. That's my opinion. I'll get off that soapbox. But that's my opinion about the whole love story. I was not a fan of it. Um, I thought when it comes to the villain, 
he was a very interesting villain. I think they could have like hashed out his character a little more. I thought the use of the shadow was really, really cool. But I will say overall, the whole voodoo thing, it was a little too dark for me. It was a little too much. It was a little too real. Like, because I know people like believe that and do, it was just, it was too much. I was like, mm, I don't like this. Um, but I will say like, it was a true representation of like part of that culture, like that, like that's part of that culture. Um, so I'll, hats off to that, but it was just a little too creepy, uh, a little too dark for my taste. Um, I will say there was some really cool like frog jokes in the movie before anyone was turned into a frog. Um, when he was like trying to like sway Prince Nadine to like, you know, have his fortune read or whatever, he was like, you know, you're going to be hopping at this opportunity or like, your future is green. And I'm like, mm -hmm, frog jokes, I see you. So I appreciated the humor. Um, I liked, oof, I liked, I liked a lot of things about it. I thought the firefly was funny. There were some really good spots, but there was also a lot where I was just like, come on guys. So let's get in to our top three categories. The song, which is Almost There, which Tiana sings, which by the way, I love the animation flip in it. It was really good. You know how I love an animation flip. Um, I'm going to give it an eight out of 10. I thought it was good. It told her motive. It was solid. It was hummable. I thought it was very true to the character, help us to take the character understanding to another level. It was great. Role model, um, I'm giving her an eight out of 10. She was super determined. She was super hardworking. But what strikes against her to me is that sometimes she she let her goals get in the way of her just living. And I'm not like, you got to take some time. You got to enjoy your life, you know? Um, and the message, I think, is like kind of what you want versus what you need. And it's when you have what you need, that's it. What you want can be nice, but what you need is important. And I like that because, I mean, I think there's a good reminder for all of us is like, as long as we've got Jesus, we're fine. Like everything else would be great, but if we have Jesus, we're set. And so I liked that, um, but it just, it was just kind of weird. I don't know. This movie just didn't do it for me. Um, so that would be a total score of 23. So I feel pretty comfortable with what I'm about to do. I'm telling you, I liked Tiana, but this movie overall just wasn't doing it for me. So I'm going to put her above Snow White, below Merida. And that's what it is. I will see you guys for our next one. Bye.